Hello everybody. Welcome back to Moose Villa off grid. Today we're digging a four foot deep hole roughly I don't know two to three foot square four feet deep. This is the hole that I will be pouring with concrete in order to put my my telescope pier into. Now I did go and look at getting a backhoe or something like that because I've got two holes like this to dig. One for the gray water up by the house. This one right here for the pier for the telescope. Plus I've got all that gravel to move that's still up in the driveway. And the cost to rent a tractor backhoe was $3.25 a day and that came with a trailer but you had to be able to tow the thing to your own property and I have just a little Chevy Colorado and it does have a 7,000 pound towing capacity and the tractor with the trailer and everything is right at roughly 5,000, 5,500 pounds so I could probably tow it but there was some concern I had some concern. I don't think they had any concern. Uh, I had some concern as to whether I could get it here safely. I talked it over with one of my friends, David in Wyoming, and he had similar concerns. I talked it over with my friend in Tennessee, and he encouraged me to get some professional equipment before I I continued to do all of this work and I hurt myself and I spent a lot more than $325 renting a piece of equipment. I would spend that on medical bills and I kind of agree with them. But I asked the rental company if they could deliver and they can't do it Saturday. Surprise, surprise. They can only do it during the week. And I worked during the week at least half days and I don't want to rent something for a full day and then not be able to use it. That just didn't seem like a whole bunch of sense. So the first available day that they can bring it out here is Tuesday. So I figured while waiting for Tuesday I might as well see how hard this is going to be and see if I can dig it myself. And if I can dig it myself I'll save myself $325 plus the taxes and uh, probably be a delivery fee on there of $25 each way and a bunch of other fees. So I'm going to try and do this myself. So hopefully you got your favorite drink, some chips or popcorn. Sit back and enjoy watching me dig a four foot deep hole. Kind of makes you feel like the China syndrome where you're digging a hole down in the middle of the earth. Now I realize four feet isn't that deep. But when you're digging through rock and gravel, it feels deep. So I've got a spade shovel here right back behind me over here out of camera range. I've got my post hole digger. And uh, I've got a drink over here to keep hydrated. You'll notice I'm back to wearing shorts again. And the reason for that is I think it's too hot here for the bugs. I think all the biting insects have gone to Florida and they're lying on the beach right now. Because they all went, wow, the UP is so doggone hot right now. It's not worth it. We might as well go to Florida. Now if they do come out here, I do have my long pants over here and I could change into them. I've been digging on this for about an hour now and I'm down about a foot I 
I realize the deeper I go, the harder it's going to get because this shovel is going to get shorter and shorter. Well, it's not actually going to get shorter, it's just going to be down in the hole more and more. So we'll see how it goes. The advantage of doing it this way is if I'm able to do it with a shovel and a post hole digger and stuff, I'm going to end up with a relatively square hole with straight sides and I won't have to put a form in here to hold the concrete. The dirt and the rocks and stuff that are already in the hole will hold the concrete just fine. I will use rebar and various other things like that and I'll do it the proper way but if I was to dig this with a backhoe it turned out to be a fairly big hole and so then I would have to build my own form inside this hole in order to hold the concrete. So, like anything, there's positives and negatives, and I'm really hoping this is going to work, that I'm able to dig this deep enough by hand without hurting myself without making the hole so gigantic that I have to build a form and things like that. So uh, go ahead and take a sip of your drink. And I'll continue working. the shovel sound like it's hitting metal that's the rocks but so far the rocks in this hole have not been too bad I'm running into a lot of rocks that are like this but that's not bad that's easy enough to pry around and dig out. It's those ones that are the size of a truck tire. They're a little bit more of a pain in the neck. So if we manage to dig this hole without running into any truck tire sized rocks, will be a wonderful thing. I might have to make myself a special right hand shovel because once I get dug down far enough here it's going to be hard to get the dirt out. But if I had a shovel, it was like a doggy poop, a doggy pooper scooper, you know, where it's flat on the bottom and has a handle on it. I think I could get a lot of this dirt out. I may be able to use the post hole digger. I think we're just going to take it one step at a time. And solve the problems as they come up. Not worry about a problem that isn't here yet. So you see me cutting in a lot and that's an effort to, to keep straight sides on my hole.
the more I keep this hole consistent, the less concrete I'll have to use at the end. as I thought. Post hole digger does a great job of digging but it does a lousy job of pulling the dirt out of the hole. My soil is very sandy and rocky and you put the post hole digger spoons together and it just goes right through. This stuff is good. Something I kind of look forward to each time I go on break. I've always liked sour things, limes, mangoes, tropical fruits. I think that comes from my childhood. My father was in the Navy and we spent a fair amount of time in the tropics. Part of the time we were stationed in Key West, actually Big Coppet, which is the island just to the north of Key West, the Navy base there. We were there when I was very young, in first grade. And then we went from there to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. And we were in Cuba from 1962 to 1966. This was immediately after the Cuban Missile Crisis but also during the time that Fidel Castro was in charge and we had a number of incidences with Castro. One of the incidences we had was anytime Castro had a problem with US policy, he would turn the water off that came onto the Navy base because the water came from mainland Cuba there was a water pipe that came across and he had a big, you know, uh, area they could turn it off. Well, the new admiral that was at the Navy base would have none of that. So soon after we arrived, uh, Castro was upset with something the United States had done, turned our water off. And so the admiral, his name was Admiral Bulkley, ordered the men to cut the pipe in half that we didn't need that water from Cuba. Well, sometimes when you do things rashly, the consequences are not well thought out. Well, the consequences of him cutting the water pipe or having the water pipe cut was we had no water on the island. I mean, granted, we were surrounded by seawater, but if you've ever drank seawater, you know that you're not going to last very long on seawater. So they started an emergency water rationing, started hauling water in on ships that used to be oil tankers. And the ships would come in like on a Tuesday and a Saturday. And so you would fill your bathtub up and all of your water jugs and everything that you had on Tuesday. and use that same bath water all the way until Saturday when the next ship came in then you would empty the water out of your bathtub when you were sure that the ship was here fill your bathtub up again and then everybody in the family 
we take a bath in that cold bath water until the ship came again on Tuesday. And there were numerous times the ship didn't come. So sometimes uh, you might take a bath in the same water from Tuesday until Tuesday. Well, I was relatively young at the time, second grade, so I guess that makes me seven years old or something like that. So I don't remember a whole bunch of the difficulties, but it was an interesting time of my life. And once we left Cuba, we went to uh, Brunswick, Georgia, to a Navy base called Glencoe. And when we got to Brunswick, my parents purchased a house and decided to put down roots there. My dad had already been in the Navy for 20 years, and he decided that was where he would retire. So they purchased a house, and we did a lot of work on the house and the garden and everything like that. That's a different story that we'll talk about again some other time. But those were the very early years when I was in second grade through roughly fifth grade when I lived in Cuba. And there were some good parts about living in Cuba, especially if you're a young kid. And part of those good parts is all of the fruit that you get off the island. Limes, mangoes, bananas, all the tropical fruits grow wild on these islands. And you can just go pick them anytime you want. And there are fruits that are so sour you can't eat them. And other ones that are just really tasty. And so as a young kid, this was really uh, a formative time of my life. And I think that's enough talking. Time to get back to work. About 31 inches. Oh, I think I'm on on break again, do you? Now you're somewhat right. Had to go get another tool. This is a, a big pry bar to help me dig to the bottom of the hole. And while I'm taking a break, might as well feed the birds. A friend of mine brought me a new bird feeder and a new stand for it. So I've got even more bird feeders to keep filled. This particular one has these, uh, these box things on them for your woodpeckers and things like that where you put the suet cakes in it. So while I was at Tractor Supply, I picked up some of those. And also, the bird feeder she gave me was one of these ones that takes this Niger seed. And what this stuff costs, you don't want to waste any of it. So far on this bird feeder, I've seen primarily goldfinches, the American goldfinch, and then a bunch of sparrows on the ground. So let's go hang these up. So my friends Cindy and Laurie are the ones that gave this to me. They're custodians at the building the forestry building, and you can see I've got the Niger seed feeder, then there's more of a, I guess, sunflower feeder, a little tray feeder right down here that the chipmunks have really been enjoying, and then these uh, suet feeders, and then I've got a fourth rung there that is available for something else, a 
going to run out of feet, the feeders, but I'll stick something up there soon. And I think I've wasted enough time. Time to get back to work. Get, get digging that hole. This hole is quickly getting deep enough that I'm going to have to climb in there in order to get the dirt out. I guess the post oil digger didn't like that comment. By the way, one of my viewers made a suggestion that in each of my videos I put a cost breakdown of what each one of these projects is costing me. I think that's a really good idea. So at the end of the video, I'll put a cost breakdown as to what the tools cost and the various things that I've had to buy in order to do this particular project. Hey, you what? I think you guys look tired. You need to get another drink. I'm going to turn you off and give you a chance to get another drink and some more chips. We'll come back to this in just a little while. I don't want you getting worn out. That's it, folks. It's only got to be 40 inches deep. It's 44. Tomorrow I'll go get some rebar. We'll build our cage to go in there. We'll clean out the hole again from what has fallen in. But we're going to call that a successful hole. Well, I shouldn't say that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Should wait till tomorrow morning to say that when I know how bad I'm going to feel. But right now, my initial feeling is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's a new day. After digging that hole last night, I certainly got a good night's sleep. Today we're, we're making ourselves a rebar cage to go inside this hole. So I went to my local uh, lumber yard and I got some half inch rebar. And I was lucky that I had a bunch of four foot lengths. Usually it comes like 20 feet long. They can cut it for you, but on a Saturday it's kind of hard to get somebody to cut it. And then I went to uh, Tractor Supply and I got some of this baling wire like you use for fences. So I'm using this wire to wire together the sticks of rebar. Now this doesn't have to be the most pretty job you've ever done. The idea is to make the wire secure enough that it holds the rebar in shape until you get the concrete poured. And then the concrete will form around the rebar and that will hold the shape. Okay, so we got ourselves a triangular rebar cage. And these little things are chairs. 
that you put on the bottom of the rebar to keep the rebar off the bottom of the hole because if the rebar gets exposed to the dirt it will actually begin to rust and so by putting on these chairs you're able to keep it up off the bottom of the hole I was thinking I needed three of these, but I think two of them will be fine. But all it needs to do is just keep it up off the bottom of the hole. We'll kind of tie these two together. So that is our rebar cage. This will go over and go into the hole. We'll support it while we're putting concrete into the hole to make sure it doesn't get off to one side or the other. And then this will provide the structural support that the concrete needs. Let's go put this in the hole. Okay, we're ready for concrete. I think one thing we're going to do is to move this support post to the other side of this beam because it's just a little bit too close to our hole and when we build a platform around the outside here to make sure we have a level deck that's going to be in the way. Well, That's all we can do right now until we actually start doing concrete which we'll do in the next video. So that's the digging of the hole, the making of the rebar cage, and we're pretty much ready to start pouring concrete. We'll pour this about three quarters of the way full, then we'll make our form for on the top, pour it all the way to the top, we'll level it off, we'll put some rebar bars into the fresh concrete, that come up out of the hole and that will go inside a sona tube which is a round 12 inch diameter tube that will go up on top of here and come up to roughly about that height. So uh, still lots to do. Thanks for joining us here on Moose Villa Off Grid and watching us dig a hole and build a rebar cage. If you would, please give us that old like a -roo or a thumbs up icon. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. We'll see you back here very soon as we continue our adventure of building our observatory and photography blind.